Hello everyone, this here is the official LEGO Titanic set. I bought it for $630 US. It comes with 9,090 pieces and I built it live over on Twitch. This measures approximately 135 centimeters in length. That's about 53 inches or nearly four and a half feet. So if I put a completely random minifigure into the scene, you see it's completely dwarfed. There is nothing else to compare to this from Lego as an official product for visual impact. This takes up so much space and it commands so much attention in a room. It is absolutely a statement piece, a tour de force for Lego. And what you're paying for here is not so much the building experience, not so much the volume of plastic that's included in here, but just the fact that this is absolutely enormous and yet made of Lego. Anybody who's not aware of the existence of this, who comes over to your house and sees it, is gonna be like, holy heck, you have this giant model of the Titanic. You must really, really like the Titanic. That is impressive. And then they get up closer to it and then they realize, what, wait, wait, this is made out of Lego? And that, that right there, that moment, is really what you're paying for here. Because the build experience is, is good, but it's not ridiculously incredible. The level of detail is good in many places and the accuracy to the source material is also good, but not perfect. Let me go ahead and start talking about some specific details and I can talk about general stuff, the building experience, especially in building techniques as I go along. So looking at the, the forward deck, this is a very nice little build for an anchor right here. I, I really like that. It's, it's well-sized and it's just genuine Lego. There are no stickers in this set. This is a vinyl piece. There's a single vinyl sheet to get all of the accurate flags. The flags are correct on this. So check your historical records if you have any, any issues with the placements there. Uh, the chains do go down into the deck. This is the chain anchor right here. The forward deck doesn't have a whole lot of detail on it. And this is where you really see the limitation. You start to see the limitations of the medium of Lego itself. And the designer or designers did not try to go too far, did not try to bring too much detail into this that was not going to be able to be uh, rendered with just regular pieces. One thing that I definitely do not like at all is that blue piece right there. It's completely out of place. But as we go over here, we got the cargo loading hatches. Those, those do not open, but the cranes can be posed around a little bit to make those look a little bit interesting and they will hold themselves in place. So if you ever move this around, you don't have to worry about things, you know, haphazard, haphazardly moving about. Um, the the bridge level and the wheel houses for, for docking are set up pretty nicely. There's a fair amount for sure of studs on the side construction throughout, but not too much of it. Most of the construction of this is studs up, but there are some cool things along the way, such as the way that they got these vents inserted. They're they're telephone handsets and they're inserted down into the deck. So there's a huge uh, hollow space behind this, but they do a very good job of covering that up. When you look at the the, the funnels, the, the smokestacks, uh, the real ones and, and the fake one, they are angled back and they are covered up around the bases pretty well. So there are not major gaps in there. And all of the strings that are used to represent lines and stays and the antennas and things do have studs at the ends. So you don't have to worry about tying up any, any just loose strings anywhere. I appreciate that a lot. Down at this level here, you got the promenade level, which does have hollow space behind it and is built, I think, appropriately for what they're trying to go for. But you get down here, you start seeing the real repetition. A lot of people were surely concerned, deeply concerned about repetitiveness during this build. I'm happy to report that, at least in my opinion, I don't like repetition. I don't like a whole lot of repetition in builds myself, but it didn't feel like there was too much. Getting these portholes set up uh, did require a little bit of assembly line style of, of building because as you can see, there are a lot of them, but you only build one third of the model at a time. You can see there's a seam right here and I'll show you how those are able to come, uh, come apart, which is good. But you only build a third of a model of the model at, at a time, sorry about the focus there, but 
you go back and forth between different techniques as you as you go from the bottom to the middle and start cladding the outside and then start adding deck details past that. It feels like you're going through doing different things along the way. So it doesn't get too boring or annoying, at least at least to me. Some folks, you know, your mileage may vary. I also appreciate the fact that there is white behind these. There's a better angle to see that. But some folks will be less tolerant than I was, but I definitely am not as tolerant as some others. So I think I, I think that this was balanced out pretty well for a good overall experience. And when you put major sections together, it does feel very, very satisfying. I will say that I personally am not satisfied with this shape right here. I wish that Lego had more different shapes and sizes of curves and slopes to be able to get this this flange in the the forward quarter one fifth of the of the hull i think i think this is sealed up well there are no gaps underneath here this is multiple assemblies that had to come together you got studs on the side construction uh, with studs back you've got studs out um, here studs on the side again these whole panels were angled in it's all sealed up well, given the parts that are available, but it's not accurate to the shaping of the real thing, which is just very difficult to do in this medium. I don't think though that this or any other small inaccuracy detracts from the grandeur of the whole thing and the value and the overall impact of owning this thing in the first place, unless you are a Titanic historian specifically. If you are a super fan of this, something like the shaping of the hull being off will of course bug you, as will like the wrong numbers of, of lifeboats or a slightly wrong angle to the funnels, stuff like that. But just generally that doesn't impact me and is not impacting my enjoyment of this or my sense of value here. Let me return to the deck and take you through a few of the details in the second segment. This element right here represents the skylight over the forward first class grand staircase, a highly romanticized feature that's very important for fans of the Titanic. And then a lot of this just kind of continues with, with more of the same. They tried their best to uh, approximates the the shapes the major shapes that the eye sees from a distance here using just regular lego techniques and i think that a lot of good things were done with the hiding and burying of lego parts like for instance how these archways are partially buried down into the deck and how this stairway is mostly buried down into the deck you can see the piece that's used there it's sealed up pretty well but my personal favorite thing out of everything in this entire ship is one of the smallest. It's that. Yes, that right there, that brown thing. Two pieces, a one by two with rail and a one by two with bar mounted sideways and buried into the deck, representing a large wooden bench. It's just one of the coolest, nice part usages that I've seen in a very, very long time. When I put those together and recognize what they represented, uh, it just blew me away. It's just the cutest thing. It really is. I wish there were more things like that, you know, more small details that really stood out like that. Again, we're just limited by the resolution that's possible with Lego pieces, but some of the techniques really push those limits. This is the compass tower over here with a stairway on the side of it. More railing going around. You can see up a little bit closer how well the, the funnels are sealed up around the deck so you're not able to see down in there. I believe they did recolor the lightsaber hilt piece and also this lightsaber bar piece uh, for this year, especially for this set, and I think to good effect. Is this a little bit too bright? Yes. You know, a little bit too saturated. This color, the flame yellowish orange, orangish yellow, or keto orange color, school bus yellow color, yes. But would tan have been better? No. Definitely would not have stood out enough. Would orange, just regular orange have been better? I don't think so. I think that this was the best choice overall for the whole presentation. For me, as someone born in the 1970s, raised in the 1980s, it was a treat to see these pieces included the two by two slopes with the classic style of grill printing on them. Just uh, you know, a little, little nostalgia hit there. Not really an objective thing, but hopefully they'll continue to make those parts. And again, the level of detail just continues across. Very few studs are left 
uh, exposed. There are some, but not too many. This here is the aft first class uh, stairway cover. So that's the, uh, the, the skylight over that. Another one of these benches. Things get a little bit thicker as we come back towards the rear. If I shift this forward, I'm not worried about it going off the edge of the table because it is very rigid going forward and has stands built under it. This is the second class entrance back here. Just, you know, we get just more stuff back here. Forward, forward was a little bit more open uh, across the deck, but towards this section, it just starts to feel a little bit more interesting to me. And that's more because of the design of the actual ship than any level of effort or anything. I just personally prefer this area back here. Felt more interesting to me. It's definitely more involved in terms of the build, especially all these different levels here, the, the different decks being being built up and offset in different ways. You do see a little bit of color just peeking through, just right in that little gap there. But generally, you have to look for errors like that. You have to look for oversights where there is not good coverage for the colorful pieces inside. And I'm glad that LEGO did continue to use colorful pieces inside for the build of this. It makes it much, much easier for the adults that they're going for with the whole 18 plus line who are often not master LEGO builders or assemblers. It really does help to have all those extra part colors inside as long as they're not showing up outside. And thankfully, I think a fairly good balance was reached with this set here. So back here, we've got cargo loading. So these are cargo loading cranes. These are cargo hatches. Sorry, there's a little bit of dust on it, but these do not open. Finally, in this last section, a couple more cranes for loading cargo into the aftmost cargo hold hatch. A bunch more of these very nice bench builds that I like. And of course, this is the aft uh, or stern docking bridge, which is built with these classic small or short in height one by four based fence pieces that are just nice to see. We've got a good stairway here. This is actually a tensioner. This actually works. So this turns around and beneath you can see it's connected to this line, which is ultimately representing the, the lines for the main communication antenna system that goes throughout most of the length of the ship up above. The shaping for the deck gets pretty complex back here to avoid there being too many gaps. So right along the edge here, not too bad. It's unfortunate though that we had to resort to bending one of these these flexible tubes. I think white was a new color for this one when it when it came out. These are used at the at the bow as well, but this did have to be bent fairly sharply towards the rear. It takes a little bit of of doing and you are left with these gaps in between back here that are just staggered out and doesn't look absolutely the best final uh Final flag here. Let's look down below a little bit. This is definitely my favorite print on the whole boat, and that is metallic gold that gives a good effect. Compared to the pearl gold, the regular molded gold color, which is the second generation version of that color, that's used for the propellers down here. Now these are attached to engines inside, and I have seen a lot of controversy surrounding the center prop and whether it actually had four blades on it on the Titanic when it went down or if it had three blades. I've seen strong scientific arguments to either uh, uh, historians going back and forth between each other. I don't know the the definite answer. I don't know if anyone knows the exact correct answer because there are a lot of arguments on, on both sides. But obviously Lego went with the three blades for, for all three propellers. Uh, which definitely matches best, I think, given what they have available. They don't have a four-blade propeller in this scale anyway. The the rudder can be adjusted in angle if you want, but I don't really recommend it. It's not particularly durable there. Uh, just leave it alone. I think it's fine. There's one thing here I don't like, though. As a matter of fact, I think this is my single least favorite aspect of the entire build. As we go forward, looking at the propeller shaft, right up to here it's very obvious to see the tan color inside of there. And I just think that that single plate that's behind these tiles should have been dark red. 
everything else is so consistent all throughout. And I talked about how they've done a very good job of hiding interior colors, but just right there, there's also just a little bit uh, back here. There's a little bit of, if I can get that to focus properly, there we go. Just a little bit of gray that shows through. Uh, that's, that's okay, but this really shows up. This is really obvious to me from many angles on display. Seriously, just that one piece on either side should have been substituted for a different color and would not have been an issue. Now I'm gonna just casually take the ship apart. I mentioned earlier that this was built in three sections. You can see a major seam right here and one right over here, which I'm kind of accidentally accentuating there. But all I need to do is unplug the antenna at any point, pull up this fantastic design feature that I call a key. It just has a long axle that goes through a bunch of pieces you're about to see. And that's all it takes to separate this right there easily simply and safely, also reliably. Also, each section has its own stands, so wherever you take it apart, the sections remain stable. Real quickly to stave off picky comments, this is on a rotating pin and will not hold itself in one location. It's also not intended to represent an actual uh, compass. It's supposed to represent a large clock. Now, each of these cross sections does its best with a little bit of of creative liberty taken, I think, to simulate what the ship would look like at this point. I think some things have been pushed forward or moved back a little bit to have a little bit more consistency of cutting through walls and showing you the centers of rooms. I like how the walls are simulated with the use of car doors consistently all the way through because it's a very thin element and also gives you a little suggestion of a door handle on each. You got some state rooms up there. Coolest thing to me is the swimming pool over here. There are a bunch of one by one tiles that need to be lined up throughout these types of sections. And that can be a, one of the more tedious things I think in the build. Although from my experience while building this live on Twitch, more people are interested in the, the mechanical stuff down here, such as the boilers that are simulated in appropriate rows, although they don't have enough space to give the full accumulators for the, the smoke and exhausts, you know, to actually come together. The other side shows the exact same level of detail and similar building techniques. And I appreciate the fact that the swimming pool that I like is cut in half as well and lines right up with the other side. Here you have some catwalks that are for maintenance, uh, some, some access doors down here and also a suggestion of ladder on the side. Those are supposed to be bulkheads, so you should not be able to see through there. The middle and aft sections are connected with the same sort of key system, which again, works super easy and completely hassle-free, no worries. Once again here, similar level of detail, same sort of part usages and more of the one by one tiles needing to be lined up appropriately. These are some big engine rooms and you already saw as I separated this out that the engines do pop out in the aft section and these themselves can be pulled out completely to take a look at the details. They did make it symmetrical front to back, which is not 100% accurate, but I think it's fine again at this scale and as I mentioned earlier, these are connected. So each is connected to the appropriate propeller shaft. There is a turbine as well, the third engine in the center of this way back in there, but you're not able to access that once the whole thing is put together. Up above, well, more of the same of what we saw before. So nothing new to see there. The last thing I have to show you is this somewhat nautical themed retro looking nameplate, which has a very, very simple build. And those are the same types of letters, uh, printed letters that were used for the Lego Ideas typewriter. They do not give you a full alphabet in this set, just the letters needed to spell this out. And again, very, very simple build for that. Maybe a little bit disappointing, but it's not that big of a deal. Leftover pieces look something like this, although I must admit I knocked this over at one point. I think I got all the pieces, but if you're looking for a 100% accurate list, always go to BrickLink to see exactly what spare parts should be included. And then this is, well, the closest thing to a sticker sheet in this case is the, uh, the vinyl sheet. All right, let me see if I can talk about value with this thing. Because again, it costs $630 US, and as usual, of course, it costs more in most other countries. The US is usually the cheapest place to get Lego by design. Is it fair? No, but it is the way that it is. 
The price to part ratio on this thing is fantastic. 9,090 pieces for $630 US. Yeah, that's really, really good. But many of the pieces are very, very small. And not a lot of the pieces are very large. As a matter of fact, many of those pieces that are very small are dedicated just to the cross sections. I've seen a lot of people oogle over those cross-sectional areas and just how much detail is 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 shown there i've seen a lot of people use the terminology use the wording it has a detailed interior which is i don't know it it suggests to me that they don't quite understand these are tiny little facades yes it looks nice but they are very very shallow facades on either side they just go a few bricks deep most of this is not detailed on the inside it does not have a fully detailed interior also those little strips of facades and these two sections that you can open up well how many how many times are you, are you really going to see that because folks who have spoken most positively about those i feel just being honest with what i've observed and what i feel we're looking at pictures of just those sections and haven't really considered the ownership of this haven't really considered the full experience the real world experience of having this because yes you build all that stuff you feel it as you build it you appreciate it as you build it but then you're not going to display your titanic in three parts you're going to display it like this because it's mag it's magnificent it's glorious it's huge it's it's beautiful it could easily be a museum piece it could be on display anywhere lego or not people are going to flock to it. Anybody who catches this out of the corner of their eyes is going to be like, whoa, let me see that. It doesn't, I mean, it's kind of timeless in a way. It, it doesn't matter if you were, you know, born uh, uh, when this <laughs> when this was in the news or you were born in the age of Fortnite and TikTok, this is going to impress you. And nothing more needs to be said about that. <laughs> that's a full stop this is impressive this is really really cool to look at but you're going to display it like this so you're not going to see the interior stuff and thus i personally cannot include all that as a major factor for determining the value of this to me the value of it is this what you what you're seeing right now there's a little bit of the back, the back of it that's cut off but i wanted to have it on on the table here this is it and 630 dollars is well, it's a, lo it's a lot of money. This is not a perfect scale model. It's not absolutely perfect. If you are specifically a fan of the Titanic and you want everything to be perfect, this is not the one for you. The shaping is not perfect for, for the hull. Coloration is, is not ideal. Uh, I think there are other versions of kits that you can get either significantly cheaper or 100% accurate to the, to the best of of modern day knowledge they'll be smaller but again if you are a titanic super fan and care about every single little detail this simply cannot give you that because because it's lego and that's that's fine uh, just overall to me personally i feel like i could do much more much better with 630 dollars us but the set itself as a lego set it's really good. It's really good. And it's it's beautiful. Um, the fact that you can take it apart to move it around and everything is is really good. I had no issues with the build. I think that somebody could actually buy this as their very first Lego set and and be successful with it because the instructions are done to to Lego standards, to normal Lego standards. There's nothing super, super tricky. There was one thing that I messed up with the third engine, that center turbine engine that you can't really much see anymore. Uh, I put some of the inner parts in backwards because there actually is a suggestion of, of the in, inner interior veins in there. Put them in backwards. My fault, you know, but that was that was the trickiest thing along the way. I also happened to receive one of these strings that was the wrong length, but that's the type of thing that you know, it happens every once in a while and you just contact customer support and they will send you the correct thing. Uh, yeah, it's good. It's not frustrating. It's just huge and heavy and expensive. I don't think I have anything else to say about it. And so on that note, I will end. Thank you very much 
for watching. Thanks to everybody who uh, followed along as I was building this live over on Twitch. We had a lot of a lot of fun along the way, a lot of silliness, but it was a, a successful build. And I'm glad to have been able to share that with folks live. I'm glad to have been able to share my thoughts with you here in this video. Thank you very much for watching and I will talk to you again soon.